Hello, Mike here. Thank you so much for joining me again on my channel. I really do appreciate your support. Now, this video that I'm making today is very much in reaction to questions I'm getting from the community, and that's about cost and the cost of doing machine learning inside of AWS. Because you may have noticed that it can be quite expensive. Machine learning generally is expensive, and that's because we use lots of data and lots of compute. And even though storage is kind of cheap and GPUs and CPUs are kind of inexpensive in AWS, it all adds up over time. And if you're doing machine learning projects which are training for hours on end, it can end up costing you real money. So in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, five different aspects of cost. The first one is we're going to look at services inside of AWS which are free, or certainly have a free component to them um, for machine learning. Uh, then we're going to have a look at how we can do things on a budget, how we can drive down the cost of other services that aren't free. Um, then we're going to look at how we can manage our budgets and monitor our spend inside of AWS. There are actually four things, not five things, sorry. The last thing is that I have a competition, a prize giveaway, where I'm going to give away 100 US dollars of AWS credits. So for you, if you're the lucky winner, you don't have to deal with costs for a while anyway, training models and doing other things inside of AWS. So let's get into it. This video is brought to you by Multi-Factor Authentication for all of your AWS root accounts. Get it now and save yourself from being hacked. Please add MFA to your root accounts. Thank you. So let's take a look at what you can get for free inside of AWS. You may know this already, but when you sign up for a brand new AWS account, you get something called the AWS free tier. So this does have to be a brand new account. It starts from the moment you enable that account. It can't be an account under an existing organization with some other kind of billing. So it has to be a new account, new billing details, new contact details. If you've got that, then you get free tier. Now free tier has three different components to it. Things that you get for free forever, things that you get for free for a 12-month period, and things that you get for free on trial. So for a one month, two month, or for a certain number of invocations. And to find out what's available for the free tier, you go to aws.amazon.com forward slash free. And I'll have that link in the description below this video. Always go to this page to make sure that you're up to date with the latest of what's available in free tier. Don't don't just take this video's word for it because things may have changed between the recording time and when you get to use it. But if you come here and you scroll down, then it will start to talk about the actual services and service components which you get as part of the free tier. So on the left hand side here, I can scroll down and filter this list by machine learning, which I'll do. And then up the top, we get to choose the particular tier type. So we've got that always free, the 12 months free and the trials that I was talking about before. Now with machine learning selected, if I click always free, then I'm sorry to say that actually nothing is always free for machine learning. We only get the 12 months free periods or the free trial periods. The poster child essentially for always free um, is going to be compute where you have 1 million invocations of a Lambda function for free every month forever. Read the fine print to make sure that your Lambda functions are small enough. Um, but this is really the main thing, I think anyway, in terms of what's always free inside of AWS. Um, let's turn compute off and let's now move on with machine learning. Let's look at what you get um, for the 12 months free. So change that filter type at the side. And here are the seven services that you get access to. These are predominantly those API driven uh, pre-trained machine learning models that AWS make available for you to easily bolt into your applications. So we've got Comprehend, Lex, Poly, we've got Recognition, Transcribe, Translate, and finally down the bottom, Amazon Augmented AI. So if you take a look at these, then for that 12 month period, um, every month you get a certain amount of capacity. So in Amazon Comprehend, 
uh, 50,000 invocations of that. Um, with Amazon Lex, you get uh, 10,000 uh, text requests per month. Um, Amazon Polly, 5 million per month for that entire first year. So this is enough for you to be able to experiment around with applications that use some of this natural language processing, chatbots, or text-to-speech, um, or whether you want to use some of this Amazon recognition to do image recognition and object detection um, inside of images that you upload into recognition. So it's enough to get you started. It's enough for you to be able to understand how these services work. Um, now let's go over to the trials. What's uh, available as a free trial at any point going forward. So even if you have an account um, which is older than 12 months and you no longer have the 12 months option, um, these trials are still there and they kick off the moment you start to use this service for the first time. So if you have already started to use some of these, then your free tier may be ticking now. So just bear that in mind. Um, but the first one up here is Amazon SageMaker uh, in general. This is general compute. And so for the you get two months worth of of some level of compute. Let's have a look at the details of what you get right now. I'll read this out because it's kind of small. You might not be able to read it on your screen. Um, 250 hours of an MLT3 medium or an MLT2 medium, uh, depending on whether you're using that in studio or in um, de on-demand notebook instances. So if you want Jupyter notebooks, you can run them for 250 hours per month for the first two months for free as long as you're in that T3 or T2 medium size. So that's enough, right, to, to do some things. You can use um, things like TensorFlow, um, Scikit-Learn to build small models actually on the notebook. The thing to bear in mind there, though, is if you do call out to the SageMaker SDK to perform, say, a training job, for example, or an inference endpoint, then that is compute which runs somewhere else. Take a look at the videos that I've created about uh, SageMaker Studio and SageMaker Notebooks um, to look at that in more detail. But make sure that as long as your compute is on that actual instance, then you can run it for free. And um, what else do you get? 25 hours of mlm 54 x Large on SageMaker Data Wrangler. So Data Wrangler is that service that enables you to, well, wrangle your data, prepare your data for machine learning. So you get 25 hours of that. So that's something which has been added into this trial since Data Wrangler got launched. So you get 25 hours of it to see whether you think it's actually going to work for you. Um, 10 million write units. Um, and what's it got there? The detail. 10 million read units, 25 gigabytes of storage within SageMaker Feature Store. Um, another thing that got announced recently or at reInvent uh, late last year, 2020. And then uh, what else has we got here? 50 hours per month of M4X large or M5X large instances on training. So if you did start a training job with the SDK from your 250 hours of your notebook instance, well, you've got 50 hours to burn up, which you can actually do quite a lot with an M4 large or an M5 X large instance there. Um, and then finally, we've got 125 hours of an M4 X large or an M5 X large uh, for making inference. And so if you are building the inference endpoint, you get some of that too. So just in this one alone, for the first two months after you start using SageMaker, you've got this free tier which you can start to use. Um, other services in here available on trial, um, Amazon Comprehend Medical, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth for labeling data. You get two months of that. And you can see here that's for the first 500 objects labeled for that month. So do read the fine print on this stuff. Amazon Textract here, you get one 1,000 pages to do the optical character recognition, essentially, or bringing out text out of uh, scanned in documents. Uh, Kendra, uh, Personalize is there. Um, Deep Racer, so 10 hours of uh, Deep Racer for 30 days. Um, and it talks about what Deep Racer is here. And you will receive 10 hours free training to evaluate and five gigabytes of free storage during your first 
month. So again, read the fine print on here, but you do get some deep racer. Amazon forecast for two months, Amazon fraud detector for two months. There's even another page. So continue to go on. You've got DevOps guru, look out for vision and look out for equipment too. So you'll see here and you'll see these new badges up here, things that get announced, uh, things that get announced at reInvent or at um, other summits and the like around the world. Um, when they get launched in order to get you in so you can see it and you can have a play with it, um, you get to have a go often um, with the trial inside of your free tier for your AWS account. So there's your free tier. That's what you have available to get you started with some services, get you interested, get you practiced, get you understanding what those services can do. Now let's take a look at when things get a little bit more serious. So this is where you're training models with compute resources and you need a lot of compute power to be able to train those models and then ultimately to host your endpoints and make inference. In this space, we're going to be looking at AWS SageMaker. SageMaker, I've got other videos about what that is on this channel, so go check them out wherever the link's gonna be for that. Um, SageMaker is a collection of tools and services that helps machine learning projects in AWS. Now, if you're training models, um, you'll be able to use the SageMaker SDK, um, configure up how you want to train that model, push that data into SageMaker, it will spin up resources and start to train your models. How do we keep those costs down? Well, we can add in a flag in that training call, in that command that goes to the SDK, we can ask it to use spot instances. Spot instances are spare capacity inside of AWS that they sell off for cheap. And inside of AWS SageMaker, we've got managed spot training, which can get down to 70% of costs for training your machine learning models. So it's as simple as adding in a couple of lines into the SDK call, and it will try to use spot. And that's the key word there, it'll try to use it. It doesn't necessarily always succeed if the capacity is not currently available, but it will try and retry. And look, as you're training a machine learning model anyway that might take a few hours to train, then maybe just give it half an hour to see if it can find some spot resources somewhere in the world to train your model and save significantly if you're not in a hurry. That's how you can save out of the box straight away with training models with SageMaker. Now, when it comes to the inference side and any other kind of compute resource inside of SageMaker, other options are available. And this really looks at when you're ready to go to production, when you're ready to start to do a commitment to something for a long period of time, you want to make inference with your model for the next couple of years, well, in that case, you can use uh, savings plans. So savings plans are something which have already existed inside of EC2. You can have EC2 compute savings plans to be able to commit to a certain dollar spend in your account. If you can do that, you get a percentage saving off what you're buying. SageMaker has SageMaker savings plans, and you can use this for the compute resources that you use inside of SageMaker outside of those spot training instances. So essentially that makes the three different ways that you can buy resources and infrastructure inside of SageMaker. There's on-demand, which is default, it's what you always do, it's the most expensive way, but it's the most flexible way. Then you've got spot, which you can do on those training instances and save big dollars when you're doing that training. And then you've got the savings plans for when you want to make a long-term commitment to a long-term business project. Those are ways that you can save money inside of SageMaker. The next thing to get to then is how do we manage our costs? How do we make sure that we're not going over budget? And for this, we head into the billing console. And clearly this is an account which I haven't done an awful lot with, so there's not much going on in terms of cost. Um, but from the billing and cost management dashboard, if you go to budgets, which is a link on the left hand side, you go into there, it'll ask you to create a budget. So let's go ahead and do that. I clicked create budget and you have some options here. I'm going to go for the cost budget, which is the recommended option. Click next. And now I set up some of the parameters of the budget that I want to set. And so essentially I'm saying, um, how much am I willing to spend? Now this won't stop you from spending more money, um, but it will help you to analyze your spend 
against this budget that you're setting up. Let me get rid of this little banner at the top. Um, so first, um, we have to come down here, set our budget amount. So how much in this case do we want to spend per month? Um, so we're going to have a reoccurring budget. It's going to be fixed and I'm going to set it to five dollars. Something pretty low, but because I'm just playing around with AWS at the moment in this account, I want to make sure that I'm getting alerted if I'm spending any significant amount of money. Um, I'm planning to use my free tier with this account. You can increase that, of course, if you want to. Next, it shows us some of the uh, budgeting scope. It essentially says this $5 budget that you've set um, will uh, not have been enough for some months in the past. Um, but obviously now it's OK because the costs are pretty low. So it gives you that idea. Um, there's nothing that we need to do in this section. Um, we're just going to give our budget a name. So let's be really original and call it um, my budget and then move on to next. Now that our amount has been set, um, we can go ahead and create our alarms. And we can click here to add a threshold. So we can add a few different threshold thresholds. Um, this first one, we're going to say, when I've reached 50% uh, of my budget amount, then I want you to send me an email. So uh, my email.com will go in there um, and it'll send an email to me when I reach in actual terms 50% of my budget. So $2.50 essentially. Um, but I can add more alerts. So let's add another alert here um, and let's have a look at the options here for the trigger. So we don't only have the ability to trigger on actual, we can actually do forecasted as well. So if I can say 100% Give me an alert if it looks as though my costs are going to go over my $5 budget for the month if that's forecasted because they see that what I'm doing in my account, maybe I've left an instance running that I didn't mean to, well, then I'll get an alert from this alert here. And maybe if that isn't enough, I'm going to add another alert. Uh, maybe that I've reached 150% of actual costs of my budget. So I've gone over budget um, and I should have entered an email here. Let me go and uh, copy my email address from here, uh, paste it into this one and paste it into this one. Now I have three alerts set up. Go wild, set up the alerts however you want, but you're now going to receive those alerts in this setup anyway, not only for the actual spend, but for the forecasted spend inside of your account as well. And so that's some pretty sophisticated detection you've got there. Let's go ahead and click next. You get the option for some actions here. So if you're a bit more of a sophisticated AWS user, you could actually trigger off some process that would go and do something. And this could potentially go and look at the number of uh, machine learning instances you've got running and shut them down. But this is on you. This is something that you have to do. AWS isn't going to do this on your behalf. Um, so options, if you want to do that, um, there are our alerts there as a summary. We go and click Next and we review everything. We click Create Budget and it's gone and created that. You can see here in the summary where we're currently sitting and I'll start to get alerts if I start to use this account more and start to blow over those budgets. So the other thing I'm just going to uh, bring to your attention as well is the AWS Cost Explorer. Um, so if you go to AWS Cost Explorer in the top bar up here, um, click on that. Um, there are extra tools in here which you can play around with as well. Um, there's some great documentation. I'll put that in the link below as well. If you go to Cost Anomaly Detection, there's a little bit more smarts here about uh, detecting cost blowouts in your account. And it uses machine learning behind the scenes to detect detect anything which looks out of place in your account with this cost anomaly detection. So now we've got a great way to be able to monitor how much we're spending inside of AWS. We've got anomaly detection to make sure that if things start to get out of control, we get alerted as soon as possible. So there's the free things, there's the cheap things, there's the monitoring. Now it's just ready for the prize giveaway. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be giving away 100 US dollars of AWS credits to one viewer of this video. All you have to do to enter this is to subscribe to the channel, like the video, put a comment below. It's YouTube. That's what we do. Am I trying to game the YouTube algorithm? 
Yes, I am, <laughs> because I'm just trying to get this channel spread out as far and as wide as I can. But in all seriousness as well, please do put a comment below if you've got any topic that you want me to cover in the space of AWS, machine learning, technology in general, robotics. There's a whole ton of stuff coming up, but I definitely want to answer the questions that you have. So put a comment below with some ideas about how you would spend that 100 US dollars of AWS credits. Put a question below. I'm happy to answer those as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, and I shall see you in the next one.